An advanced yogi doesn't know how to do every pose. An advanced yogi knows when not to do a pose. I think that ego can get caught up a lot in yoga and, you know, you're trying to be the best in class or hit the most advanced pose. It just doesn't matter. That's not what yoga is about. It's about listening to your body and knowing when to back off and knowing when to use props. All right. So the, for the viewers of It's a Rick Life, we have a special guest today. We have Ashley. Yeah, I'm Ashley Murkoff. Right. We are all living in a really crazy time right now with the quarantine going on. Yeah. So tell us like how it's going on in the city that you live. Yeah, so I live in Oregon in the States. I live in a small town. It's called The Dalles, which is 90 minutes east of Portland. It's like located right on the Columbia River. So it's really pretty, but you know, it's small and it's pretty secluded. Mostly everything is closed right now except for grocery stores and hardware stores. And usually I go out for work. I'm a mental health therapist. I work at a residential facility, but right now I'm working remotely from home. So I am actually seeing my clients via Zoom. So I'm pretty much on Zoom all day right now, just stuck in the house. Everyone's wearing masks when they go out. Yeah, so it's pretty wild. It's hard to get toilet paper here. <laughs> um, the whole toilet paper craze, we had it too. People just, there was a stampede in front of all the major supermarkets. Yeah, they've been out here for a while. Actually, I had, so I'm originally from California and my sister and my mom actually sent me packages of toilet paper because oh, we were out for so long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we actually we went out my partner and I yesterday trying to find some more and we went to Walgreens it was like the third place we went to and we got the last package of toilet paper it was like a four roll pack so yeah so it's it's wild <laughs> wow well I thought things were bad here we know that New York is having a really hard time right now and things are getting crazy like I don't want to get too political I want to keep it very yoga centric, but yeah. you know how things are going right now. So I would like to know, just out of curiosity, uh, what do you think the government response, like how, how is it according to you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm in the States, right? So each state has their own protocol that's implemented. So it's also been interesting to talk to other people in different states and see what's going on. Like for example, most of my family is in California, the Bay Area. And I was actually just talking to my sister this morning and she said that in California, they're actually fining people if they are going out recreationally, they have a fine up to $1,000. So unless it's for like essentials that you're going to get, they're really not wanting you to go outside. So it's not that like serious here in Oregon yet, but I feel like protocols are, they're changing like weekly. So it's just it's crazy to see, you know? Yeah. I think pretty much the same here. It's, uh, it's, I think it's a global pandemic. We just got to do what we got to do. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think everyone is just, I mean, it's new, right? No one's, we've never experienced this before. And so no one knows what to do. Everyone's kind of just figuring it out as we go along. And so I think everyone's doing their best, but I mean, it's kind of just getting made up these rules as, as time goes by. Now, what is also surprising me the most is that a lot of misinformation going on. A lot of people don't even know how, you know, a virus works. And yeah. uh, I don't know, eat more garlic or do this or do that. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna prevent coronavirus. It's, yeah. is there anything like that going on uh, in your area where people are, you know, more into the misinformation and they're basically, you know, very confused about this thing or it's pretty much under control? From what I've experienced, it feels under control. I know with my work, we've gotten a lot of training around the COVID virus um, and like how it spreads, like how it spreads by droplets. So like your sneezes and your coughs. And that's why masks are being implemented and the six foot rule, like your droplets can spread to six feet. That's where that rule came from. So I feel like coming from my, my job, my work, because it is mental health, we've gotten a lot of education and we've had required trainings that we've had to go through. So everyone that I've been working with feels pretty educated and it feels pretty calm for the most part. Um, and I'm not having too much interaction, like I said, outside of work. So I haven't heard of anyone 
being super anxious or like overly paranoid, but you know it's happening. <laughs> and here I'm, I'm noticing that people are slowly losing it, that there are some days that are uh, harder than others because, you know, yeah. we are social animals at the end of the day. And, yeah, totally. You know, for our body, it's a, it's, it's a threat response when we're alone and we're not interacting yeah. with anybody. So yeah. uh, the mental health aspect, now that you told me that, you know, it, that's your field, what would you recommend to people who are going through this tough time? What would be your top three tips, <laughs> your expert yeah. point of view? Well, I would say from my personal experience, what's keeping my sanity is at the end of the day, I always do yoga. So whether I'm just doing my home practice, making something up on the fly, or I'm going to YouTube and looking up like a free tutorial, or I'm also a member on Allo Moves. I don't know if you've ever heard of that brand, Allo. It's A-L-O. And they have an app called Allo Moves and um, you can subscribe to it for like 20 bucks a month. And I, I describe it as the Netflix of yoga. There's just like infinite amount of yoga videos that you can get on there. And then they also have a free YouTube channel with uh, like free, free classes. So that's yoga, cool. yeah, so that's cool. Yoga um, is my number one go-to. There's also been a lot of, I've noticed yoga studios that are live streaming classes for like five bucks. So it's really accessible right now. So I'm doing that. And then I always make sure to like get out of the house for a little bit, even if it's just like walking around the block once. I know that that's not allowed for everyone, but if you're still allowed to do it, I would say take advantage of it while you still can. And then accessing like video chat, just like we are right now, like Zoom or WhatsApp or, you know, Facebook Messenger, FaceTime, I think that that's really key. I've been doing that a lot, specifically with my family. We'll do like group Zoom chats and it's it's just fun to like see all the little boxes. It's kind of like like the Brady Bunch. You see everyone in there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, we're also privileged, like it's, it's a crazy time, but at the same time, technology is helping us connect with each other. Imagine yeah. this with a Nokia phone like 10 years ago. I know. Yeah. I was talking with my friends about that just the other day. Like, what would this be like if it was like back in the nineties? Like you would really be out of touch with people. Mm -hmm. I guess you would just be on your phone a mm -hmm. lot, like your landline making phone calls. <laughs> Netflix is saving my sanity. I'll be honest. Oh yeah. I have binge watched like everything. <laughs> my partner and I have been watching, uh, starting yesterday, this show called Bloodline. We also binged watched um, Schitt's Creek. Have you heard of that show? Okay. I'm pretty late a lot of my friends are suggesting me to watch it. I'm like, oh, I'll watch it later. But now I do have the disposable time. Yeah, I'm going to start watching Shit's Creek. It's hilarious. I mean, we binge watched the whole thing in a few days. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then we also binge watched um, Ozark. I just that? started. I'm on episode oh, two. God. It's a crazy so, show. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> No spoilers. It's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's uh, good. It's good. So yeah, those were, those have been our top three, like, uh, series that we've been binge watching. And then honestly, we've kind of just been going through like Netflix originals and just finding movies to watch on there. And that's been really nice. A bit of a backstory, like what led us to this interview. I was actually looking for a video that clearly states the difference between Vajrasana and Virasana. Yeah. That was one of the few poses that, you know what, I want to try it out. Since I have the time, I'm stuck yeah. at home, I can't go to the gym. Um, although, like, your YouTube channel is fairly new. It's, yeah. uh, yeah. it's been only a year that you've been posting videos. Yeah. But I found that your content is very, to the point, it, it's very clear cut. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the only videos that actually states without any other anecdotes or any other bullshit but it's what was the difference between virasana and vajrasana that's what i appreciated but then when i went to your about section mm -hmm. i noticed that you went to india and yeah did a certification training for 200 hours yeah what was that like <laughs> it was wild i mean i'm so that happened almost six years ago i think in may or june it'll be six years exactly um, and I'm pretty well traveled and it was like, I mean, going to India, it was like stepping into like another planet. Like it was definitely a culture shock. Um, and I'm glad that I got to stay there. I was there for five weeks. So, um, 
pretty good chunk of time. And I'm happy that I did because it was such a shell shock. Um, I spent the first few days in Delhi and it's just, I don't know if you've been there, but it's just like loud and there's just cars going every which way. And it's just very, um, there's, it's just really chaotic if you're not used to that environment. Um, and so I would say it took me about a week to adjust. And then um, after those three days, we took a bus up to Rishikesh, which was like a solid eight hour bus ride. And then it was um, like an intense yoga teacher training. So that was four weeks long. And so it was Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. It's just everything yoga. You're just totally immersed and we were staying at this ashram and that's where the classes and the studio was at and yeah it was wild and then during the daytime we would get breaks like a couple of hours for lunch and so we could go and like venture off in the village and go shopping and explore on the weekend and it was fun um but yeah I'm happy I had an extended amount of time there because I got to adjust and really take in the culture Speaking of adjustment, uh, let's say a lot of people who travel to India or any, any South Asian country from, let's say, North America or Europe, one of the few challenges are obviously like the heat and the food. Like, so what was your experience, especially the food? <laughs> yeah, well, the heat was crazy. I mean, we went in, I want to say like late May, early June. So it was crazy hot. Like some of the days it was like 120, we do Fahrenheit here. So 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius but it's crazy hot, whatever it is. <laughs> um, so just like, you'll just stand there and you're like dripping sweat. So that was a challenge to overcome. And then the food, like at the ashram, it was fine, but we got pretty much like the same meals every day. So it just kind of got like boring. So we actually would venture out into the village a lot and we would eat at restaurants or we would eat off of like the food carts. <laughs> um, and it was delicious. I loved it. I love Indian food. So for me, it was great and it's totally affordable. Like we would go to a sit down restaurant and have a proper meal and it would be three American dollars. So it was just wild how far like the US dollar goes there. The chai there is amazing. You can't get chai here the way that there is. And um, also the sweet lime smoothies ugh, mm. to die for. Like you just can't get sweet lime here. And I crave that all the time. Yeah. The food was excellent. I loved it. Um, I got deli belly though. So that was <laughs> a deli belly. Well, in my <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got a couple of questions for you. It's uh, the, the, the first qu question that I have is that there are so many different ways to stay fit or get fit such as yeah. running weightlifting why yoga you know yoga for me it honestly it came later in life i was always an athlete growing up as a child i did uh competitive gymnastics i started gymnastics i want to say when i was like three years old and i did it all the way up until middle school and then i kind of wanted to switch it up try new things and so then i ventured out and i did um like basketball, softball, volleyball, all throughout um, high school. I did cheerleading, which I really liked because it incorporated gymnastics with dance. And then I also did like diving and uh, we call it powder puff football. It's basically like flag football. Um, so I was really into sports as a kid growing up. And um, I didn't, I wasn't introduced to yoga until like later in high school. One of my best friends, her mom was super into yoga. And so I remember she came over for like a sleepover one time and she brought this really dates me, but like a VHS tape of one of her like mom's yoga classes. And so we did um, a VHS tape of yoga in my living room and I just, I really liked it. And so that was how I was initially introduced, but um, I had only done it like a couple of times in high school. And then in college, I took a yoga class um, that I really liked for a few months. And then I would just do it here and there. It wasn't like a regular practice of mine. Um, and then in my mid twenties, I lived in San Francisco and I lived at like maybe a block or two away from a Bikram studio. And so I started doing 
speak room pretty regularly. Like initially I liked that they had a nighttime class. I think it started at like 7 30 p.m and Bikram's like 90 minutes so I would like go do that workout Bikram's much more of like a workout it's very intense it's like physical um so I would do that and I would just shower and I would just like go to bed so that was kind of my nighttime routine for a little while and then um once I went to grad school I met a girl and she uh, said that she was going to India. She said that she had planned a trip and she was going to go get her um, teacher training. And I was like, what? I want to do this. Like, can I come? And she was like, yeah, sure. So it was her and I, and then we each recruited two more of our girlfriends. So there was four of us that actually went. And I would say it wasn't until I got to India that I, that yoga really became like a regular practice in my life like I didn't know too much about yoga before I went to India I kind of just like cannonballed into it <laughs> so at first when you started doing yoga I mean not at Rishikesh but you know late high school was yeah. it difficult at first uh, you were into you're already you know very athletic to begin with but yeah. were there any unique difficulties that are linked to yoga that you, that you had? For me, there wasn't like a big difficulty because I think I had such a strong gymnastics background. I think that that translated well into yoga, um, especially with inversions. Like I couldn't imagine starting yoga as an adult and being asked to flip my body upside down for the very first time. I think that that would be like really scary and that would take a long time to mentally get over um, but because I had been doing that my whole life like a lot of what you might say advanced poses came pretty naturally to me but I would say what probably took me the longest was linking my breath to poses I didn't understand pranayama or like why are we inhaling as we do this and then exhaling we come out that some time to to like click in my brain but the actual asana like the physical practice felt like it came naturally after all this journey now would you consider yourself a master yogi <laughs> no i always consider myself a student i'm i'm always learning um i know that i teach but i'm 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 always a student you know i'm constantly looking up tutorials on how to do a certain pose properly or um, like I'm, I'm always on Pinterest, like pinning, like how to do this pose and breaking down, um, you know, how to accurately do it um, or reading, reading books. Uh, one book I really like is called Yoga Mala and it breaks down poses beautifully and it has pictures and like step-by-step -step and yeah, so I, I'm a student. I will always be a student. That's a great attitude to have. So yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a lifelong journey and yeah. you're going to have fun along the way anyway. Yeah. I, I, yoga, is, it's a lifestyle for sure. What would you recommend to a beginner, somebody who just got interested in yoga? Like what are the common mistakes that person could avoid? I always recommend when people are asking me about yoga is to find a beginner class. Like find a class that is titled Beginner Yoga. Um, that would be my best advice because I think a lot of people just show up and go to class and I did that too. I had like no idea. I had no education or background on yoga and you will just be in like these fast paced, um, you know, in the States, vinyasa is like the primary yoga that's practiced and that can get pretty fast. And I think that it can be overwhelming for a beginner and they're not stopping to break down the pose. So you can also get hurt. Like I've definitely had injuries from yoga, like doing my chaturangas wrong. Like I really messed up my shoulder for a long time and it kind of, it clicks in and out now. But, um, so I would say find like a catered class to beginners because it's going to move slowly and it's going to break down each pose step by step. Like you might just spend a full class on one pose and that's really in my opinion, needed. Does nutrition matter in yoga? 
I would say yes, it's a, it's a lifestyle. You know, I would say the most popular is like veganism and, you know, vegetarian. I'm personally not want either of those. Um, I would say I'm primarily pescatarian, but um, I also cannot turn down a bacon cheeseburger. I'm going to eat a bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> um, yeah. So I would, I would say that too, even for beginners, I think that that can be intimidating or there might be, there can be an arrogance sometimes to yoga if you, you know, at certain studios, not all of them, but um, there might be studios that feel a little bit more stuffy or um, that it's required to be vegan or vegetarian. And I'm here to say that it's not, you don't have to be either of those, but you know, if you are, and that works for you, great. But if you aren't, and that's great too, you know, I like to encourage intuitive eating. So just following whatever your body is telling you to eat. Um, you know, like when I first started my yoga journey, I felt like such a rebel because I would just like, I'd be eating meat and I'd come in like with my Red Bull and I would just like bust out yoga. And... I tried to go vegan a couple of times in my life and I failed miserably within two, three weeks. Then I realized <laughs> I can be 80% vegan and by that 20% I kind of need meat. Yeah, that's how I am too. I tried to go, I've tried to go vegetarian a few times and I just felt I was lacking iron and I was getting the worst headaches. Like I would be getting migraines and I finally was just like, why am I doing this? Like my body clearly isn't liking it. And so I'm going to go back to what works for me. So listen to like what your body wants and needs. That's a great pro tip. For people who lift weight, would yoga be beneficial for them? I think totally. I think you could use it either like before or after or both. I think it would be like a great way, like stretching to kind of like warm up your muscles. And then I don't weight lift personally, but I could imagine your muscles feeling pretty like tight and tired. So I could see yoga being a great practice afterwards, doing like a seated yoga practice just to like cool down and mellow out your muscles. Yeah, I think it could work really beautifully together. Are there any other fitness activities that you enjoy other than yoga? Let's say running or could be anything. <laughs> I do run occasionally, but I have to say I hate running. <laughs> um, I, I do that just for the physical benefit of it. Um, but for enjoyment, I love hiking. Like I'm an avid backpacker. I also have a program that I started last year called Women in the Wild, where I take women out um, that are beginners in backpacking and show them how to backpack. So yeah, backpacking is really my number one way of getting cardio. Talk to us more about Women in the Wild. It, it's, it's, it has such an interesting name. Yeah, I, you know, I'm totally into the outdoors. I used to um, be a wilderness therapist. That's actually what brought me up to Oregon initially is I got a job doing therapy in the wilderness. And so that's really when I was first introduced to backpacking and hiking and uh, camping more uh, really out in the wilderness, not just doing car camping. And so I got really into that because I was just out there doing it every single week. That was my job. And then when I transitioned out of that job, um, I just found it really difficult to find other women that um, were interested in it or had the knowledge set that I did. And so I figured, hey, if I can't like find anyone, why don't I teach people, other women, how to do this? So, um, and make it fun and easy. Like, I think it gets intimidating. I think it can be sound overwhelming. Um, but if you know what you're doing, you know, then, then it's fun and enjoyable. And so I created that program um, to just do like weekend trips, uh, like one night or two nights. I've also done like one-on-one -on -one with people so you can get a little bit more hands-on knowledge of like, you know, what kind of gear are you needing? That's, that's a big one. Like weight is such a big um, issue in backpacking. Like if your pack is, you know, 50 pounds, it's just not going to be that enjoyable like lugging that on your back going uphill it's just not so uh finding the right gear that's lightweight 
Um, how to pack your pack is very important um, to distribute that weight evenly and properly so that it sits on your back so that your pack doesn't like rub in and uh, give you blisters. And then like once we get to the trail showing women how to, you know, how to set up a tent, how do you start a fire, um, like what, what food is appropriate to pack. Um, so breaking all of that down, like how to create a shelter using tarps. Um, yeah, so I just, I just really wanted to teach women. Um, there were little selfish intentions behind that so that I had, so that I had more women to go out and do that with. Well, basically it's a survival training that <laughs> it's like it's uh especially now that we we don't have enough time to you know unplug from our electronics that we're always connected i think it's exactly. gonna be a pretty fun activity to just go out and enjoy nature yeah i love it i mean that's just i i i've always struggled with anxiety and i feel like whenever i'm out in nature my anxiety it just it goes away it stops i i feel calm i just i can listen to like the trees it just it just there's a calming effect that i can't get really anywhere else except maybe yoga <laughs> so according to personal experiences what are the benefits of yoga how did yoga impact your life man i yoga has impacted every aspect of my life honestly it has like the trip going to india i feel like was the beginning of such a major shift in my life major growth chapter. Um, and I didn't, I wasn't necessarily aware of it when I said yes to that trip. I just kind of felt called to it. Um, but I feel like yoga has impacted me spiritually, physically, emotionally. It's impacted even just like the style of clothes that I wear or like music that I listen to. Um, I've made friends in India that I still keep contact with. Um, I think it's it's changed every aspect of my life for the better. Speaking of music, um, how did yoga change the, the type of music that you listen to? Yeah, just um, being exposed to like authentic Indian culture and the music that they listen to and will meditate to. I feel like I was able to bring that back just for like my personal use. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll throw on like, I, I use Pandora, but I'll throw on like an Indian music, music channel and maybe I'm cleaning the house to it or I'm doing yoga to it or just driving around in my car. So it just expanded uh, my music taste. So that's a great cultural exposure that we are talking about here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you traveled elsewhere as well, not just India. Yeah, I've traveled um, all around Europe. I've gone to England. I lived in England for a few months when I was 19. I went with um, actually my same girlfriend that initially uh, exposed me to yoga, introduced me to it. Her and I went to England and uh, lived out there for a little while right after high school. And so... Um, once you're in Europe, it's pretty uh, affordable to travel to kind of like country hop. So I, uh, I used Ryan's Air. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's like a cheap airline. And I mean, this was back in the early 2000s. And so I would take like red eye flights for like two or three dollars um, and fly into different countries. So uh, going to Ireland and Czech Republic. I, and then I did another trip in my mid twenties back to Europe and went to Amsterdam. Um, I'm blanking on all of the names, but Germany. Um, yeah, I traveled around for like a month and we went, we switched it up. We switched countries like every three days for a month when we did that backpacking trip and more people should do this and it just if, if you have the means let's <laughs> travel and see the world get exposed to different cultures it's uh, it's pretty awesome what you did thanks yeah I think it's um I think it's easier than people think it Europe especially is expensive I don't want to downplay that <laughs> um but like I said once you're there it's a lot more affordable um oh and I've like been to Spain and Thailand um 
but yeah, so I would get like a, like a Euro rail pass. Um, you can usually get one of those for pretty affordable and there's different packages that you can buy, but I would buy just ones that would allow you to go to like X amount of countries in like 30 days. So uh, traveling by train is amazing. If you've never done it, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great way to see the countryside that you, you just normally wouldn't see by taking an airplane. Is there an age limit for yoga? Like what I'm asking is how old is too old or how young is too young? You know, I don't think that there is an age limit. I've seen, you know, little kids, a year old, year and a half old, getting into yoga poses. Obviously, their practice is going to be different. It's not going to be structured. It's just going to be playtime and exploring your body. But, you know, I have nieces and nephews, and my brother and sister will send me pictures of them in like little yogi poses and that's that's amazing to see and then I've seen uh like videos of people up in their late 90s doing yoga so I really think that it's accessible at all ages which is also what I find to be very appealing um because a lot of sports there is an age limit to it like like gymnastics you know most most gymnasts are retired by 18 it's very like physically demanding, um, you know, or like football, like most people, you know, they're retired in their mid thirties. So I just like that yoga is accessible for a lifetime. For somebody who is a beginner, personally, I don't, I don't know if I've checked my channel, like I'm, I'm a noob in terms of fitness. As somebody who is in my position, late twenties, never did any physical activities. What would, you, would be the you know, tips and tricks that you'd recommend to, to such people? I think that's why I push so heavily to find uh, a specific beginner class. Because like I said, it's going to go slow. They're going to break down the pose because it really does matter. Like having your shoulder perfectly aligned, um, like parallel to your wrist, you know, in certain poses that matters. Mm -hmm. Or like having your knee aligned with your ankle the, that matters to avoid injury or um, how to do a chaturanga properly. You know, uh, a lot of people like to kind of like roll their body, do like the worm in chaturanga. And that's, that's not proper. And that's, that's how I did it initially when I learned chaturanga and I, you know, had my shoulder injury. So um, I would say taking the time to learn proper form, you know, initially it might seem slow pace and a little bit boring because it's more educational and it's going to be more structured like a class but I'm telling you like it's it's just going to it's going to benefit you in the long run and then I would say the best advice I've ever got in yoga and I still think about this constantly in my practice one of my teachers told me that an advanced yogi doesn't know how to do every pose an advanced yogi knows when not to do a pose and I think that that is it's the best advice I've ever heard. Um, I think that ego can get caught up a lot in yoga and, you know, you're trying to like be the best in class or, you know, hit the most advanced pose and that stuff, it just doesn't matter. That's not what yoga is about. It's about listening to your body and knowing when to back off and knowing when to use props. Um, that's another thing I would say, I would encourage newbies to use props. I think that props don't get utilized enough because you're looking at these advanced yogis that aren't using props or like in the yoga magazines people aren't using props you know those are professional yogis um, and I would say even for myself when I was a beginner I didn't utilize props as much I actually use props more now as an advanced yogi than I did as a beginner yogi um, I think that it's easy to get caught up in like oh, well, that shows that I don't know how to do a pose or that shows that I'm a newbie and I don't know what I'm doing, but it doesn't. Like props are there to help you and they are there to support you so that you can fall into that pose more easily and get that proper stretch. Now, because like in every field, we have ego lifters or ego runners. So I, yeah. I don't know that you, know, you have that too. That, that's, that's yeah, it, it exists. Yeah, for sure. Basically, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people are going into this fad of intermittent fasting, water fasting. Well, I'm guilty of that as well. That's something that I, that I do. 
Uh, what, what are your thoughts about that and caloric deficit for people who want to, who wants to lose weight? So mm-hmm. what are your take on those aspects of dieting and nutrition? Yeah, I've personally never done either. So I can't speak to personal experience. I have had friends do intermittent fasting though and spoke highly of it. They enjoyed it and they saw good results from it. Um, so a part of me is interested in trying that out um, at some point in my lifetime. Um, I'm also not a huge eater, so I don't necessarily think that I need I need to fast. Um, I just don't eat a lot or like big portions. And you mentioned pranayama at some point. Uh, that's, I'm guessing, obviously part of your yoga journey. It's something that you have to learn how to breathe properly. But there's also another guy that who is... Um, who is getting more popular in terms of this whole breathing exercises and controlling your body through your breath. What's his name again? Wim Hof. Wim Hof, yeah. (laughs) So what's your take on him? Yeah, I actually just watched um, a documentary on him. Um, It's a Netflix, the Goop docu-series. They did a docu-series and each episode is a different focus on wellness and health. And they did an episode specifically on him. And so that was really interesting to watch. I would love to take one of his courses <laughs> and learn that much control. That would be amazing. It's um, it was wild to to watch that episode and just just see him go out in like freezing cold water and chill in it like it was nothing, or walk in the snow barefoot. I think that that could be. I mean, that could save your life. Like that, that's a great survival skill. Like if you're out in the wilderness. Oh yeah, from from a survivalist uh, perspective, mm-hmm. like that's that totally makes sense and. Uh... I've been doing it for the past uh, few days. The breathing portion is not that hard. It's actually pretty enjoyable because you basically mm-hmm. get high on oxygen. Yeah. So mm-hmm. You feel tingles everywhere. But yeah. the hardest part was cold showers. Training your body to yeah. just get used to the cold. Yeah, it, it's, it's hard. It's That's hard. how I am because I love a hot shower. Um, that was honestly actually one thing that I struggled with in India is I didn't I, there wasn't hot water like in my room. So for five weeks, I took cold showers. I mean, luckily it was summertime. So like yeah. that, helped, but I mean, cold water is cold water. <laughs> so just for fun, I have some different kinds of Q&A. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, these are basically you would you rather questions. Cool. Just for fun. Yeah. Would you rather know the history of every object you touched or be able to talk to animals? Oh, that's a good one. I think talk to animals. Yeah. Because sometimes it, it, you'd rather not know the history of an object, right? <laughs> <laughs> I might not need to know that all the time. But yeah, talking to animals would be awesome. Would you rather spend the rest of your life with a sailboat as your home or an RV as your home? RV, 100%. I get motion sickness like really quick. So living on a boat would be terrible for me. But an RV, I mean, that's a dream of mine. I would love to just live in an RV and travel. Yeah. Would you rather be able to see 10 minutes into your own future or 10 minutes into the future of anyone but yourself? Probably 10 minutes of someone else's future. (laughs) Why? I think, I don't know, just being, I think maybe like being a therapist, like I'm always wanting to help people. And so if I could help like navigate, I don't know, but then there's the butterfly effect, you know? Um, Yeah. (laughs) But I think it would be harder to navigate your own, your own stuff. It would feel easier to help someone else. Person will be so confused about, because imagine (laughs) there's a infinite version of the future. I would be stuck. Yeah. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know what to do with this information. (laughs) I would rather not know my own future. Yeah. I don't want to know that. That's scary. (laughs) Would you rather go back to age five with everything you know now or know now everything your future self will learn? I think know now everything that my future self will learn. I'd rather not go through puberty again. Yeah. I know. I was like, I I could not be a kid again ever and I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I like the independence and freedom of being an adult. So the last question, it's a bit weird and uh, try to picture it. Would you rather be a reverse centaur? (laughs) Okay. Or a reverse mermaid? 
a mermaid for sure yeah why <laughs> have a face like a fish like well <laughs> a face like a horse is not gonna, gonna help either but why mermaid <laughs> Um, I don't know. I've just always really loved mermaids. I don't know if it's from growing up watching reverse people. mermaid. It's a reverse mermaid. So oh, reverse mermaid, reverse yeah, mermaid. Okay. It's a reverse okay. centaur, reverse mermaid. So basically, it's it's the other part. It's a top half that you have, you know, as okay, a horse. So like a, a horse's face with like a person's body, or a fish's face with a <laughs> person's body. So it's a. It's not like Little Mermaid. It's a. Okay, the, the reverse of Little Mermaid. Yeah, I think the, 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 the prince would have a harder time, you know, falling in love with the Little Mermaid if, uh, <laughs> if the there's a fish. Was a fish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's a big that's, factor, isn't it? That's uh, a hard question. Yeah. Is. <sighs> I don't know. Well, I guess if I'm like a fish, I'm still like living in water. I don't know. That would be fun. Think Switch it up. Think about it this way: if you if you like living on land, taking the the fish option, it's a, it's it's a nightmare. You cannot breathe normally as yeah. You know, other but you can live in the ocean, That's although true. I mean that has its own set of struggles. <laughs> yeah, sharks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's sharks. Okay, maybe I maybe I choose land. <laughs> I would rather not choose. It's uh, it's. I know. I was like, that's a hard question. It's such a bad deal. Like, it's, <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pass. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time, Ashley. And yeah, I learned a lot. Great. And I hope you all the best with your channel. And yeah, thank you so you... much for reaching out. You honestly, you made my day. Like when I got that email, like you made my day. That was awesome <laughs> to hang out with you. And to be honest, um, if you're ever in Montreal and you're craving chai hit me up okay sweet like, that's no yeah. i don't like the best chai but it's pretty decent okay nice <laughs> yeah i actually i went to montreal i was there for eight hours on a layover me and one of my girlfriends when we were traveling over to spain we had our layover in montreal and so we were just like jet lagged and trying to like be tourist but I would love to go back there. It's such a beautiful city. Yeah, if you're ever in Oregon, let me know. I'll show you around. Oh yeah. To end the Q&A session, if I have to ask you, if, if you could change one thing in this world, just one thing, what would it be? Yeah, I would say I would love to see people approach life and other interactions with just more love and compassion, yeah. I think that that would benefit the world. Just having, I guess, em empathy for others. Being a mental health therapist, that's really helped me a lot, like grow my own empathy and just learning that, you know, everyone has a story. Everyone has a struggle that they went through. Everyone has trauma. Um, and to just, you know, be kind. <laughs>